if you talk to me about natives, I that is it um, tropical natives, subtropical natives, Western Australian natives, is it high temperate natives? <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, but that's the beauty. You don't have to specify really if you use something like your Vegemite on them. Um, so if you do that, it doesn't really matter what it is. Subtropical, I do like more garden to light because the higher humate, the higher level of biology in there. Um, and then that way they can just take what they want. So I have, that's actually my Melaleuca on there. So and that's the garden to light. So that's what I first started using. I only changed um, because I was starting to grow things that's not supposed to grow on my subtropical clay. But now I've got eucalypts from all over Australia growing there. So including a beautiful snow gum, which still I keep pinching myself <laughs> how this thing gets beautiful new flushes of growth in 35 degree weather. And yet they're, you know, they should be up there somewhere. So giving it what it wants, it's taking it and taking it well. Cole mentioned the Nepenthes. Does anybody know what Nepenthes is? That's the hanging pitcher plants. Uh, I grew them along my patio because of uh, the mosquito problem, because of uh, land for wildlife. Um, for me, it's all about frogs around the house. So I just have uh, a small above ground swimming pool, which is a frog pond. I have bathtubs, I have pots. So it's all just water everywhere. Um, but so the Nepenthes were there for mosquito control because the mozzies just go in there and of course the enzymes in there break that down. They're an understory rainforest plant, Nepenthes, so they need, need shade. Now I put mine on the edge of the patio before I really knew what the sun was doing. So they're growing along there and the sun in winter's there. But as summer came, so I got there in March as the sun was starting to dip behind the house and then the following summer it came over here and just slammed straight into them, full sun. Now I got a bit of leaf burn on them so I just pumped the garden delight into them, being a full tropical plant, full tropical food. Um, and then the new flush started to come out. Each flush came out stronger than the last one. So um, within five years I had to chop them back by three quarters because I could, the, the house was so dark because of the jungle outside the window and they were harboring tree snakes as well, so which were eating my frogs. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I ended up doing a um, garden club talk in Sydney for the Tropical um, Foliage Society, Sydney Tropical Foliage Society, and I sent the query saying that I'm growing Nepenthes in 43 degree sun, which is what it was um, that Christmas that I took the photo. And the guy came back and he didn't say the word bullshit, but he actually applied. <laughs> Turns out he wrote books on Nepenthes. He was an expert, an actual world expert on it. Gordon Cheers, his name is. Anyway, so I sent him the photos and next thing I'm doing a talk and explaining how I can do it and here's the photos. So you can, these plants not only adapted to taking the sun, they craved it. They actually threw their flower spikes out above the gutter into the sunlight. So now I've, I, just, I just put them wherever, but obviously something like that, if you put it out in this full sun, it will smash it but um, they got half sun uh, without, and I just kept feeding, feeding, feeding it until the point I could cut back to even twice a year if I forgot, but at least three, four times a year. And um, I'm starting to grow understory plants with a bit more sun so I can open up the areas that I was actually planting. Oh, I can't plant that there because it gets afternoon sun. Well, now I just go for it.